The Korn keyboard is one of my favorite split ergonomic mechanical keyboards. The DIY nature and customizability of this keyboard, the ergonomics and comfort, the minimal layout, and honestly how cool I think it looks have all made me fall in love with this board. I've been using it for at least two years now as my daily driver to code with NeoVim and Tmux and everything else I do on my computer. It's been an awesome boost to productivity as well as comfort. The one problem I found with this board though is that it can be notoriously tricky to put together. You would essentially need to solder all of the different components onto the printed circuit boards for each keyboard half and this can be pretty challenging and error prone. Now Fustan, the creator of the Korn, recently released a new version 4.1 that has changed all of this. This new version is designed in such a way that it can be completely assembled from the factory so you no longer have to do any soldering to put your keyboard together. The microcontrollers for each keyboard side are built into the PCB and this version features RP2040 microcontrollers instead of Pro Micros which have way more memory and should perform better as well. The keyboard also has per key RGB lighting. You have the option to use two extra keys on each side for a total of four extra keys on your keyboard or instead you can still optionally install OLED screens which is the only thing that would require soldering when you're putting your keyboard together. Now as some of you may know I have a small keyboard shop called Split Type which I've been running for a couple of months now and over the last month and a half I've been working on revamping my shop with a new 3D keyboard builder that I made myself with Svelte and 3JS as well as sourcing all of the different parts that you would need to build this keyboard and designing some new cases for the Korn V4. But I've also opened up the shop to international orders after a lot of you have reached out to me with interest from countries outside of the US. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you would go about putting this together. It should be a pretty straightforward process. All right, so I've opened up the 3D builder here on my screen. You can see that the PCB is already selected. As mentioned earlier, it doesn't require any soldering and it's pre-flashed with VL firmware so that it's really easy to modify your layout to your liking without having to flash your keyboard. The PCBs also include a TRRS cable to connect the two keyboard sides. You can choose to deselect this if you already have a Korn version for PCB or if you're sourcing one yourself from elsewhere. Before I move on, I do want to point out that it's really important that you never disconnect or reconnect your TRS cable while either of your keyboard sides is connected to power via the USB cable. This is definitely a design flaw of split keyboards like this one, but it's a problem that you'll find with the vast majority of them. In this case, it's especially important because the microcontrollers are built into the keyboard and they're not very easy to replace. So you just have to get into the habit of always disconnecting your keyboard from power before you disconnect or reconnect a TRS cable. Next, we can optionally add the OLED screen kits I've put together. These include sockets and Milmax pins to make it pretty easy and make it possible to remove the OLED screen and reinstall it whenever you want or need to. This is optional. It's the only thing that does require soldering, but they're honestly not too difficult to install. A little later in this video, I'll show you how you would do this. Next, we can choose a case. This can be either a regular or tented case, and it can have acrylic display covers if you're adding the OLED screens or have 23 key switch plates instead so you can install the four extra keys on your corn. These are 3D printed cases and switch plates with all of the necessary hardware included. You can expect some small imperfections from the 3D printing process, but they're printed with high quality Bamboo Lab P1S 3D printers and imperfections should be very minimal. There are six different colors available as well. You can choose between black, white, gray, dark blue, blue, and red. I'm gonna go with the black tented case with the acrylic display covers as I'm gonna be adding the OLED screens. Next, we can choose which switches we wanna use. You can choose between Cherry MX Red linear switches, Gateron Milky Yellow Pro linear switches, and Cherry MX Brown tactile switches. Here's a quick sound test with each of them so you have a better idea on what they sound like.
I'm gonna go ahead and add the Gateron Milky Yellow Pro Linear Switches. Next, we'll choose some keycaps. There are two profile options, either DSA Profile, which are nice low profile minimal keycaps made out of PBT, or you can choose these FK Ultra Low Profile keycaps. They're less tall than DSA keycaps and they're made out of ABS. I found them to be pretty nice. These Ultra Low Profile keycaps also include homing keys. Now, these are blank keycaps with no legends. If you are interested in keycaps with legends, FK recently reached out to me so that I could try out their custom keycap service. I would highly recommend this if you are looking for keycaps with legends. In collaboration with them, I went ahead and ordered a set for my corn. This is what it looks like. I opted for the FK low profile keycaps. These are the same as the ones on the shop, but now with laser etched legends. I really like how they turned out. I would point out though that I ordered the legends near the top of each keycap, but because of how the switches are oriented on the corn and where the LEDs are, these don't light up very brightly as the LEDs are closer to the bottom of each keycap instead of the top. If you're looking to create a custom keycap set with their service, I've included a link to it in the description. I highly recommend you check it out and you can use the code HOSEAN for a 10% discount on your order. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose the PBT black keycap set here and I'm gonna add the accent caps as well. You get two red, two orange, and two blue. If you did order OLED screens, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly show you how to solder these onto your keyboard. Remember that these are completely optional and they're the only components that require any soldering. All right, so the first thing you should do is locate these four holes on your PCB. Then take your OLED socket and insert it into these four holes. Then you should use some heat resistant tape to secure the socket in place and prevent it from moving then you'll want to flip your PCB over you should now be able to see the pins for your socket right here you'll then take your soldering iron and some solder and solder each pin into place then you can flip your PCB over again and remove the heat resistant tape. You'll get your Milmax pins next. You should grab them with a pair of tweezers. I like to align them in my tweezers with my fingers like so. Then you can drop it into one of the socket holes. And with your tweezers, I like to put it near the top of the pin and close it and then push down until you hear a click. Now you should repeat this process with the rest of your pins. It'll look something like this. Then you can take your OLED screen and put it into the pins like so. Then I like to press down on the OLED screen with my soldering iron as I solder one of the pins in. You should do one of the corner pins first. Then you can heat it up again with your soldering iron and align it with your fingers to make sure that it's flat against the socket and straight. Then you can go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. If you want to remove it, you can use either your tweezers or your fingers to pull it out, but be careful when you do this not to pull too hard. Be gentle to prevent bending the pins. The bottom of your OLED screen should now look something like this. To reinstall it, you can just push it back in like so. To finish off, I would recommend you use some flush cutters to trim off the solder on the ends of the pins like so. And that's it, you're done. All right, now that's done, we can install the PCBs onto the case and put everything together. So the first thing you need to assemble your case is your switch plates. I'm gonna go ahead and use these. The process will be pretty much the same as when using the other switch plates. Now you'll also need your PCBs as well as your switches. What I'd like to do is to grab one of the plates and then we'll grab one of these switches and you'll see that on each switch you'll have this little opening here. Take note of where this is located and also make sure that your pins are straight. You'll want the little divot to face down and you can snap one of them here into place. I'm putting the first one on one of the corners. I'll go ahead and do this again on this other corner here. Again, with this little divot or opening here down at the bottom. I'll also do this one over here. It should be in this orientation where the little opening faces this side. Again, make sure that your pins are all straight and then we can go ahead and align the switches here on the plate. You'll want the pins of your switches to match the holes for each of the hot swap sockets and you can push in all the different switches. Now we can go ahead and continue installing our switches. I would recommend you try to pull up on the plate as you push down on the switch so that you prevent bending the plate and the switch can be fully inserted onto the socket. You continue doing this, pulling up on the plate and pushing down on the switch. Once you have a good amount installed, it gets easier and you don't have to pull up on the plate as much. And I can just continue installing the switches. 
This is what it'll look like when the switches are installed. As I mentioned earlier, make sure that the plate is in bending and the switches are fully installed into the sockets. Now for this plate in particular, we can also install the acrylic display covers. Before I install the display covers, if you've done the soldering for the OLED screens, make sure that you've installed it. I'm going to just push it in here like that. Then I'm going to place the acrylic display cover and then put in one of the screws. And with a Phillips screwdriver, I can and screw it in. It doesn't have to be too tight as you could break the acrylic display cover if you screw it in too tight. Then I'll do the other one here. It should look something like this now. Now I'll grab one of the case sides and then I'll flip it over, insert one of the screws here, hold it with my finger, get one of the standoffs and then screw this in here, just like that. And we'll just repeat that for the rest of the holes here. Now you should have something that looks like this. We'll grab our PCB and switch plate. And then you'll need to insert this side first and then drop it in. Then align the holes here to the standoffs and we'll screw that in as well. Awesome, so now you should have something that looks like this. And the final step would be to install your keycaps. You can just press each of them into your keyboard like this. Now you should have something that looks like this. Now if you're using a regular case like this one, the last thing you would need to do is to install these rubber bumpers on the bottom. I do that in these corners, but for the tented case, it's a little bit different. You'll see that with your case, you'll have these caps as well as these tenting screws. Now to install them, grab one of the screws and one of these end caps. And you'll want to install them like this so that the raised area is touching the socket screw head. Then you can go ahead and grab your case, flip it over, and then the smaller screws, you'll have two 18 millimeter screws like this one, will go on these two holes. Making sure that you've inserted the end cap, we'll screw this in here. It should look something like that. And I'll grab this guy here. And what you'll do is place it over the socket screw head. What I like to do is turn it until it stops and then you can press it in. You'll hear it snap into place. It'll look something like that. Now I'm gonna repeat this with the other 18 millimeter screw. Place the end cap in. Again, it's in this orientation. Screw it in. And then I'll put this guy over the socket screw head. Turn it until I feel it stop and snap it in, perfect. Then I'll grab one of the 40 millimeter ones. And again, one of these end caps, put this in, in this orientation. Then these will go on these two holes here. I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it in here. This doesn't have to go all the way in. It depends on the tenting angle that you want on your keyboard. Now, when you want to install the cap, you'll pull this up here. And again, grab one of these, place it over the socket screw head, turn on until it stops, and then snap it in. It'll look like that. And I'll just repeat this again for another one of the 40 millimeter screws. Now it should look something like this. If you need to pull these off, you can grab and kind of wiggle and pull until it comes out. And then you want to grab your rubber bumpers and then install each of them onto the socket screw caps. I like to press them in firmly so that they stick well to the cap. Now I should have something that looks like this once you've finished installing the rubber bumpers. Now once you're done with one side, you just repeat the same process for the other side to assemble that as well. Awesome, so now that the keyboard is assembled, you can connect the TRS cable to connect the two keyboard sides. Remember to make sure that the USB cable is not connected to your keyboard while you do this. Next, we can connect the USB cable to the left side, and then we can navigate in our browser to vial.rocks to start modifying the layout on our board. You can click on start vial, click on corn v4, then optionally you can go to the matrix tester, then you can press on unlock, and then hold down the top most and left most two keys on your keyboard until the progress bar gets filled up and press on each of the keys on your keyboard to make sure that they get registered. You should see the key get highlighted on your screen. If you don't, you can go ahead and remove the switch from your board with a keycap and switch puller and make sure the pins on your switch are not bent. You can straighten them out with tweezers and then you can go ahead and reinstall it onto your board. 
All right, so now you can go ahead and start modifying your layout to your liking. This is very straightforward. You can just click on a key here and then down at the bottom, select the key you wanna replace it with. Let's say I wanna replace this with E and you'll see a change. I'll change it back to Q. You can also click on your layers here to modify the layout for each specific layer. Down here, you also have different categories. You can see here you have this tab for keys that will modify the layer that you're on. This one for the lighting, changing media, so on and so forth. You can explore this to find the key codes you would like to use. I would point out though that over here in basic, if you wanna use a specific QMK key code, you can, let's say we'll change Q, let's click here on any, and you can enter the QMK key code you'd like to use here. You can head over to the QMK documentation to take a look at the full list of all key codes available. I'd also point out that you can go to the QMK settings tab to change specific QMK related settings. For example, in the tap hold tab, I like to turn on ignore mod tap interrupt so that my tap hold keys can work properly. There's a lot more you can do with QMK and a lot more stuff you can set up like macros and a lot of other interesting stuff which I can dive into on a separate video. I'd also point out that you can download the Vial desktop app. You can go to the download page to download the desktop application. This has some additional features like being able to save your layout and your settings so you can easily recover them in the future. And that's it. Now you're done. You should now have a fully functional corn keyboard on your hands. I'm going to be putting together more content on the corn in the future, especially regarding how I use it to code with NeoVim and Tmux and all the different tools that I use on my computer. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to get notified whenever I post a new video to the channel. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback for me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.